day of love. Wake the immortal strain. Angels with rapture announcing. Shepherds with wonder receiving. Sinner, old you believe in. Wonderful story of love. Wonderful. 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 Wonderful story of love. Wonderful story of love. Do you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to Romans chapter 1, we'll begin our reading in verse 22. Romans chapter 1, begin our reading in verse 22, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also, men, also the men, leaving the natural use of their women, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense for the error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which is not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malgafy, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks that we can come and study your word. And we thank you for that word that teaches us right and wrong and what is pleasing in your sight. Father, at this time, we pray for our nation and our leaders and for those that are doing right according to your will. We pray that you will help them in their efforts and us to live right before men, that we can be the light in the darkness. Help us to teach others that there is right and wrong and it's, and it's dependent on what you say. 
Father, we thank you for our teachers here at Bremen, and we pray that you'll bless them this hour and help us as learners be able to receive that message with open ears into our hearts so that we can go into the world and teach it. For this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. My privilege and pleasure this morning to welcome you on this beautiful Lord's Day to the Bremen Church of Christ. It is time for our Sunday morning Bible study period. We do have visitors among us this morning. We're thankful for that and invite you back anytime you can be with us here at Bremen. We will dismiss now to our classes with the nursery preschool, kindergarten, and elementary school. middle school, high school, and adult classes. Now it's on. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, apologize up front because this is the first time I've ever taught the Sunday morning class in the auditorium. I taught it a couple of times on Wednesday night, but never, never on Sunday morning. So a little bit different than what I'm used to on Sunday morning. Usually I'm teaching the uh, elementary school or high school ages, so just kind of bear with me. <clears throat> I think we'll both, uh, or all of us will get, get something out of the lesson. Uh, I know I did from studying it. Um, every time I have to study for one of these lessons, it's always good for me because it makes me, it makes me have to sit down and do what I know I ought to be doing every day anyway. Um, but uh, before we get started, uh, let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day. We're thankful for the opportunity to be here with other brothers and sisters in Christ. Dear Lord, we're thankful for your son. We're thankful for his love for us. We're thankful you allowed him to come to earth and die on the cross so that we can go to heaven, live with you for eternity. Dear Lord, we pray that you will Bless us as we study. Dear Lord, please bless our nation at this time. Please help us to be the shining examples that you would have us be to the world, which seems to be turning further and further away from you. Dear Lord, please forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of the lesson that, uh, that I was given is to walk circumspectly and redeeming the time. So a little bit of a two-part lesson here. Uh, the first part we're going to look at is walking circumspectly. Um, I'll start out with a, with a verse that most of us are, are familiar with, I'm sure. Uh, 23rd Psalm, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And, you know, like I said, we're all pretty much familiar with that verse. Uh, the idea of walking um, through the valley of the death. Um, you know, walking in the Bible gives a connotation of what we're supposed to do every day. It's our life, it's our spiritual journey. 
Um, it also is an, I mean, it's a word that denotes action. Uh, you're either walking or you're standing still. Uh, nowhere in the Bible does it say we as Christians uh, are supposed to be standing still. Our walk as a Christian um, means that we're constantly trying to move forward. We're constantly striving to, to be closer to what God wants us to be, closer to the image of, image of Jesus. We're supposed to be a reflection of him. But let's look at a few other aspects of this as we continue. Um, circumspect means watchful, discreet, cautious, prudent, well-considered. Um, those describe how we're supposed to walk as Christians. We're not supposed to walk around uh, each day basically with no direction. We're supposed to have a direction that we're supposed to be walking toward and leading, leading others to as well. Uh, it comes from the Latin circumspectus. And the adverb form is circumspectly. Describes how we're to walk. We're supposed to walk with purpose. Uh, we're supposed to walk with conviction. And we're also supposed to walk with uh, confidence, uh, being Christians. Um, some synonyms that go along with that. We're supposed to walk deliberately, correctly, exactly, thoroughly, and precisely. Uh, let's look at a few verses here. Ephesians 5, verse 15 says, See, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. What does it mean to walk circumspectly? Number one, we're supposed to walk in newness of life. Let's look at Romans chapter 4. And this is a passage that I'm sure most of us are. Uh, Romans 6, verse 4. Uh, actually, we'll look at 1 through 4. The Bible says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ uh, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Also, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Didn't write that one down. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Uh, so in Romans chapter 6, it's telling us basically how we become a new creature. Um, and how we, how we put off our old life of sin, uh, we obey the gospel, we're baptized for the remission of our sins, and we're raised to walk in newness of life. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't ever stumble. It doesn't mean that we don't ever make mistakes. Uh, but it does mean um, that we put to death the deliberate sinful life that we may have had before. Uh, the lesson here says a Christian is to leave the old life of sin characteristic of him before becoming a child of God. 1 John 3, verse 9. This does not mean that a child of God will not stumble, falter, fall, or sin. Rather, it means that he will not habitually, continually, and persistently live in sin as he once did. But, that, uh, but if he stumbles, he will be striving to the utmost to overcome, win the victory, and become perfect. And that's where repentance comes in, and that helps us take care of that. Um, related verses, Hebrews 6, verse 1. Point number two, uh, walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 1 through 17. That's Romans 8, 1 through 17. The Bible says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made, us, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For the law could not do, in that it was weak uh, through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by a Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if, but if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as, many of a, so for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage against, again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby you cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if the children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may, may also uh, glorify together. The importance of walking after the Spirit is instructed in Romans chapter 8. It is outlined in verses 4, 6, 9, and 13. What is meant by walking after the Spirit? and after the flesh can be clearly seen in the study of uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 25. That's Galatians 5, 16 through 25. It says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, <clears throat> goodness, faith or faithfulness, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the, uh, with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. You know, in today's world, a lot of these things that, were, that are listed, uh, we might consider, you know, terrible sins. Uh, a lot of those things in today's world are being glorified, which is sad to say. Um, it's up to us to, uh, in our daily walk as Christians, to shine the light uh, that God would have us shine, to be the right kind of examples to those around us, hopefully lead them to heaven. Number three, walk worthy of the vocation. Uh, let's look at Ephesians 4, 1 through 6.
The Bible says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation or calling wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called, and one help of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. The Christian's vocation uh, is living the Christian life. Uh, it's not the job that you lead or not the job that you have that you do on a daily basis. Uh, that job, the secular job, is part of your Christian walk. Uh, it's another place that we can, that we can show those around about us uh, how, to be the, how to be the right or how to be Christians, uh, how to live the right kind of life, and hopefully lead them to, uh, lead them to become a Christian. Uh, but our vocation is actually living the Christian life on a daily basis. We're to walk worthy of the vocation, uh, and that is to behave or conduct one's life becoming of one who is a Christian. Uh, to do so, we must live so others can see Christ in us. Um, that's Galatians 2.20. Uh, number four, we are to walk in the light. Uh, let's look at 1 John 1, 6 through 8. 1 John 1, 6 through 8. It says, If we say <clears throat> that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Christ, Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth, the, cleanseth us from evil. If we say that we have no sin, sin we, do, we do deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Also, Ephesians 5 and verse 8 <clears throat> says, For you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Um, brings to mind a, a story. Uh, any of you that know me know that I enjoy being outside. I enjoy, to, uh, I enjoy going uh, hunting, fishing, and things like that. And I was, uh, one day my cousin Philip and I were, were off hunting. Uh, it was at a place that I wasn't familiar with. And he had hunted there several times. We walked down a trail, a narrow trail, which in the daylight is not a big deal. Um, he dropped me off. I went to the right of the trail. He went to the left. Got to be after dark. Uh, didn't have any luck. So he was coming to get me, get down out of the tree. Uh, we walked to what we thought was the trail. We start walking. We get 10 minutes up what we thought was our trail. Come to find out, we had gone the completely opposite direction. We had gotten turned around. Um, number one, because it was dark. Number two, we were, we were leading ourselves. We weren't relying on a guide. We didn't have our GPS. We did have a compass, thank goodness. Um, but we didn't have our guide uh, that we needed. Uh, we were lying on ourselves, like I said. Uh, we also didn't have sufficient light. Uh, uh, luckily, we had the compass. We were able to get back on the trail. We were able to find our way home. Uh, in a lot of ways, that's, that's how, I'm, uh, how I picture the study as far as our walk as a Christian. Uh, we cannot rely on ourselves to get where we're wanting to go. We have to rely on, on God through his word to tell us uh, how he wants us to follow the path. Uh, we have to stay on the path. Uh, we can't make our own path. Uh, we, can't, we can't just get on, on any trail that we want to follow and expect that trail to lead us home. It's not going to happen. Uh, you also have to have light. Um, Jesus is our light. He's what is shining on our path 
so that we can uh, follow that path to heaven. Uh, just as Jesus is our light, in this world of darkness, we're supposed to be the light to the world. We're supposed to be uh, a light that's, that's set on a hill, um, leading others uh, to Jesus, hopefully leading others to uh, become Christians uh, so they can go to heaven with us. Also, this is the only basis <clears throat> of true Christian fellowship. To walk in the light is to walk as God's word directs. Uh, Psalms 119, 105, uh, Psalms 130, uh, that chapter, and also 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 3 and 4. Um, also Luke chapter 1 and verse 6. Uh, number five is, is a point that I want us to, to touch on for a little while. Walk as the Lord walked. Uh, there's no better example to follow how to live the Christian life than Jesus. Uh, Jesus was perfect. He was sinless on this earth. We're never going to be perfect. But as far as somebody that we can look to and emulate, do our best to, do our best to follow um, as he would have us follow him, there's no better example uh, than the Lord. Let's look at uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. That's 1 John 2, 3 through 6. It says, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in whom... In him, verily, is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. <clears throat> so number one, that passage teaches us that we're to keep his commandments. We can't say that we love him. We can't say that we're doing our best to follow him. If we look at his word, we see things that we're not doing that we're supposed to be doing, and we don't make that change. Uh, you can't say, you can't claim, well, you can claim that you love God, but if you truly love God, the Bible uh, tells us that we will keep his commandments. And that's not just uh, some of his commandments, that's all of his commandments. Also, Philippians uh, 2 and verse 5. The Bible says, <clears throat> let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Uh, the only way that we can know the mind of Jesus, the mind of God, is to read his word. That's the only way. That's the only way that we can get an idea of, of what he wants us to be on a daily basis. That's the only way that we can know how to emulate uh, what he did here on this earth. Um, there's no other way other than through the Bible to be able to do that. Let's look at a couple of ways that the Lord walked while he was on earth. First, he walked in a forgiving manner. Uh, Luke 23, 34. The Bible says, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He walked as a servant. John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. John 13, 1 through 17. It says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he, should, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, uh, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper uh, being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. He riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with a towel, 
wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered, answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered, answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not, save to wash his feet, but is clean every with, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for I am. For so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do, as I have done to you. Verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. So we see there, if Jesus himself uh, lowered himself to do something in those, which in those times was considered um, a truly demeaning act, which was uh, to wash the feet of others because they wore sandals or they didn't wear any shoes at all. So their feet were, were dirty, filthy. Uh, he lowered himself, washed their feet, cleaned them, uh, took upon him himself the attitude of a servant, uh, which he always had. And he didn't have to do that, but he was teaching them a lesson. Uh, same can go for us today. We have to have a servant-minded attitude. We have to have uh, uh, that attitude within us that no matter, no matter what comes along, we have, to, we have to have the mindset of serving other people to help them. Uh, that's one of the best ways that we can show others that we care about them. We can show them that we want them to become Christians. We want them to go to heaven. Uh, if we don't have that kind of attitude, you know, you can tell them all day long that you love them, you want them to go to heaven, but if you're not doing anything to, uh, to show them that love that you have for them, it's in vain. Uh, people don't care how much you know until they, until they know how much you care. Uh, let's see, Jesus also walked obediently, uh, Hebrews 5, 8 and 9. Uh, it says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the author, author of eternal salvation unto all them that obeyed him. Uh, we, have to, we have to be obedient just like Jesus. He, was also, uh, he also walked prayerfully, uh, Luke 6, verse 12. Says, and it came to pass in those days that he went unto a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Also Mark 1, verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and prepared and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Um, how many of us today, uh, I know my, I'll include myself, uh, don't find the time to, to pray, which finding the time, something we're going to touch on in just a minute. Um, Jesus enjoyed being able to talk to his heavenly father. We too are able to talk to our father. Uh, which, When you consider that he, he created the, the entire universe, everything that's in it, uh, created us, uh, the fact that we have an open line of communication to the father uh, it's something that a lot of times we take for granted. Uh, uh, Johnny's class was uh, uh, last quarter was looking at, at our prayer life, and uh, that was a good study. It's something that we can always improve upon. Um, but if we follow the example of Jesus, uh, we, show, we see the importance that Jesus placed uh, upon um, being prayerful. He also walked courageously. Uh, Matthew 21, 12, and 13. 
basically that verse is talking about when he overturned the money changers tables uh, at the temple uh, that took a lot of courage for him to do that yes he was the son of God but he was also uh, flesh and knew there could have been consequences but he he acted courageously anyway uh, same way with us today a lot of things are going on in this world that that we know are not right that are sinful uh, that are being praised at this point in time. We have to be courageous and we have to show uh, through the Bible that we're taking a stand for, for Jesus and what he wants us to do. Uh, we have to be courageous and it's getting harder and harder, uh, but we still, we still must do that. Uh, he also walked zealously, uh, John 2, verse 17. It says, and his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Uh, Luke, also in uh, Luke 2, 49 and John 5, 17. <clears throat> he also uh, walked unselfishly, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. The Bible says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that, yet, that ye through his poverty uh, might be rich. Um, <clears throat> kind of running short on time, so I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> we also are to walk, um, or in a further study of the Christian's walk, uh, a few things that, we, that we'll touch on. Uh, we're to walk humbly. We're supposed to have a humble attitude. We're supposed to walk by faith. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7 says, For we walk by faith uh, and not by sight. We're supposed to walk in good works, Ephesians 2.10. Also walk worthy of the Lord, uh, Colossians 1 and verse 10. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 12. We're supposed to walk honestly. Also supposed to walk in wisdom, Colossians 4 and verse 5. And also supposed to walk in love, Ephesians 5 and verse 2, which says, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. The verb walk is uh, coupled with various prepositions to indicate the multiple relationships we sustain to our God as his children. Number one, we're supposed to walk before God. And when I say before God, it doesn't mean that we're leading God. What that means is that we're constantly subject to his inspection on our lives. We're supposed to also walk after God, Deuteronomy 13 and verse 4. We're supposed to recognize his leadership and follow the pattern he revealed through his son, 1 Peter 2, 21. Uh, we're supposed to walk in Christ. Um, and we've already looked at in Romans uh, where it talks about uh, how we uh, put on Christ. Um, so we're supposed to walk in Christ, and that's Colossians 2 and verse 6. And we're to live in the sphere that he has provided in the church. Um, we're to walk with God, Genesis 5, 24. That says, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. That implies that walking with God is walking by faith, Hebrews 11, 5, and 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. Uh, now we're going to look at uh, some points about redeeming the time. Uh, let's look about first at first of all uh, what redeeming means. Uh, rede redeeming is offsetting or counterbalancing some fault, defect, or the like. Uh, when it says the time, there's two things that it could be applying to, meaning the time that we have in a day, which you know all of us are going to live different amounts of time on this earth, some shorter than others. But if you're allowed to live each day, each of us have the same number of seconds, minutes, and hours in that day. Uh, different things control or affect how we're able to spend that amount of time. But nonetheless, we are, we're allowed that same amount of time each day. It also could be this time in history. Um, we've already touched on several times uh, the things that are, seem to be glorified in today's world. Uh, it's up to us to, to try and redeem this time in history uh, for the Lord. Uh, first of all, let's look at the brevity of time or the importance of time. 
The most uh, liberal estimate of the average lifespan is three score and 10. Uh, the most liberal, uh, let's see, in views of this, uh, how much time do you have left? Uh, you can figure that out based on, like I said, minutes, uh, hours, days, and so forth that you might have left depending on your age. Wasting time. <clears throat> Thomas Edison said, time is the most important thing in the world. Yet how we waste it, how often we hear making or marking time, passing the time of day, and killing time. Um, Thus thou love life, and do not squander time, for that is the stuff life is made of. Let's look at some ways that we waste time. We waste time through idleness. The Bible talks a lot about this. Uh, Matthew 20 and verse 6, Proverbs 19, verse 15, chapter 23, verse 21. Um, 1 Timothy 5, 13, Hebrews 6, 12, Romans 12, 11, and so on. Uh, we also waste time by procrastination. Uh, we put things off that we could do now. We put them off till later. That's talked about in Acts 24, 24 through 27, Proverbs 27, 1, Hebrews 3, 7 through 13, 2 Corinthians 6, 2, and so forth. Number three, excess, excessive sleeping or lounging. Proverbs 20 and 13. Number four, unwholesome and worldly recreation or by an excess of, le of the legitimate kind. So we can waste time doing things that we know we're not supposed to be doing uh, or we can waste time doing things that are not necessarily wrong but if we don't place the right uh, level of importance on those things, if we spend too much time doing those things, um, takes our focus off of what we need to be focused on, uh, then those things become sinful as well. Uh, number five, meditating on financial uh, or fanciful injuries, uh, Matthew 18, 15 through 17. Pondering and brooding over past mistakes, Philippians 3, 13 and 14, Hebrews 8 and 12. Uh, we waste time through anxiety, Matthew chapter 6, 24 through 34, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Um, and they have a quote in here from Baxter in Leaves of Gold that says, Spend your time in nothing which you know must be repented of, in nothing on which you might not uh, pray the blessing of God, in nothing which you could not review with a quiet conscience on your dying bed, in nothing which you might not safely and properly be found doing if death should surprise you in the act. Instead of wasting time, we should redeem it. And we should use it wisely. Ephesians 5, 16 and Colossians 4 and verse 5. We should re <clears throat> refrain from wasting time because, number one, if we do not use time wisely, we, uh, we will not get our jobs done. Uh, and that can be either spiritual jobs or our secular jobs. Number two, uh, we pass this way but once, Hebrew 9, Hebrews 9, 27. Uh, we've wasted so much time already, verse Peter 4 and verse 3. We do not know how much time remains, James chapter 4 and verse 14. Uh, we will give an account of our time and the opportunities that that time presented us with. And that, uh, that idea is uh, found in Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. And number six, uh, we are uncertain of the time of the Lord's return, Mark 13 and 32. We can redeem time, redeem time and use it wisely in the following ways. Uh, gain useful knowledge, seizing opportunities to do good to others, in making an honest livelihood for ourselves and our families, in praying, self-examination, seeking the lost, and in spending some time with our families and, and in training our children. I appreciate your attention today. Uh, hopefully you were able to gain something out of the study. I know I was when, when preparing for it. Uh, appreciate your attention.